So this is Dan of Vagabond Awake. Today I have the good fortune of having Matthias with us. Uh, Matthias happens to have an Airbnb apartment, which we'll put a link to. Um, you can come stay. It's a beautiful community here. Uh, and he also uh, happened to have seen our uh, some of our videos. It was just a coincidence that he knew who Chung and I were when we, uh, when we booked our reservation. And we asked him if he would uh, come be a guest on the channel because of his interesting life story of living as an expat from Germany, and uh, he's agreed to do that. So welcome to the channel, yeah. uh, Matthias. It's a joy to know you and to have you uh, be a guest star. Welcome. As a, you, I'm an old subscriber of your channel, so I'm <laughs> familiar with you and Jung before you <laughs> made the reservation with Airbnb. And so yeah, it's kind of funny. I, You're the first. <laughs> yes. Like really? This. Oh, yeah. 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 First time it's ever happened. Oh yeah, so yeah, we're happy. To yeah, it's here. becoming more and more f popular, especially because a lot of people think about leaving uh, Europe or leaving the U.S. or leaving Canada. No, because especially with COVID, a lot has changed, and yeah, people can work from their home offices, and uh, yeah. that's also good work from abroad. No, you yeah. you go to a foreign country, and uh, you have completely independent uh, yeah. and uh, have a much uh, lower life costs, no? living costs and right. accommodation and everything. Yeah. yeah. So um, where in the world are we right now, Matthias? Well, at the moment we are <coughs> westbound of the capital of Panama City in um, Central America, um, close to the Interamericana, which is two kilometers from here. And the Interamericana is from from Panama to Alaska, and then the Interamericana is disconnected, uh, so there is no way to go by car to Colombia. So we are 80 kilometers westbound. Uh, it's called Playa Coronado, and uh, it was the first beach community uh, after the Second World War, which was established by a family which was called Eisenmann. Uh, family Eisenmann. Mm. And the original intention was to establish a free zone uh, like it is in Colon on the Caribbean side, right. also on the Pacific side. And they bought around 2,500 hectare and established this beach community. It started in 1943. Okay. And um, so, so how long have you lived here? Well, I came to Panama the first time in 2007. And the first three years, I went back to Germany and I visited once again. I traveled to another part of Panama. I, I went back and forth and then I moved for good in 2010, in summer 2010, when I had all my papers ready, my uh, residency, my permanency. Right. And then I... <clears throat> lived the first two years in the city, but uh, the city is uh, very polluted and has, a, especially in the rainy season, a lot of humidity. Mm. And uh, when it's raining, it's not raining, it's pouring. It's like a shower, you know? And uh, if I got a little bit depressed in my house and then I rented a place here only for weekends and then in 2000, by the end of 2012, I start building my, co my house. 2012? Yeah. So, so you've built this house that we're sitting at? I built this house from, from zero. My wife already had a, bought a property in 1992, when, uh, <coughs> shortly after Noriega, no? with, a, yeah. with the next government after Noriega which was the general, and um, she got it and had no plans with the property, and it was in another area of Coronado, on the other side in the west, and I exchanged it. I paid a little bit more because I wanted to live closer to the golf course and inside the gated community. Right. And um, so what made you want to leave Germany and seek you know, greener pastures, if you will. Well, I don't know if you can remember, but in 2008, we had a big crash 
Absolutely. with a, with a, uh, <coughs> investment and um, also a lot of people lost a lot of money with their shares and uh, also I found out because most of my money was in life insurances because I worked all my all my life independent and my social security was not that big no not 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 really great and then I said well I put my money in my real estate and in my life insurance. Mm -hmm. And because of the crash in 2008, the life insurances couldn't get enough interest from the, the from their capital gains right, no? right. to pay the expected amount of money after 25 or 30 years oh, to I the see. people. I see. And I found out, oh, I, I will get a lot less money in 15 or in 20 years, right. and uh, I can definitely not survive with this amount of money as a, a jubilado or a pensioner. And uh, I started my plan B, <laughs> which was uh, lowering my, my life, my daily life costs, no? and uh, also I needed a change from the the bad weather in Germany because we have 50% of the year really lousy weather, you know. Yeah. It, is, it is drizzling, it is cold, it is dark. Right. And um, as a, as a part-time golf professional or golf teacher, I was a golf teacher also these days, um, I could not really work and I had always a lot of delays with my customers because they don't want to play golf. When it's cold, when, it, when it's cold, or yeah. when it's when it's wet, right, right. So I decided I have to I have to move. I have to do something else. So our sounds like our stories are similar. I was uh, the market crash is what got me looking outside of the U.S. as a home base, and so that's what got you outside of Germany looking around. Yes, and uh, because you're you needed to reduce your expenses, and exactly. that was the same for me. It was yeah. what sent me on this quest of finding. Yeah the best place in the world to retire. Yeah. And it is a very easy calculation. Um, the, the people, all the people living in Germany, and at, at the moment we talk about 50% of people coming from abroad, they never paid into the social security system. And so finally we have three or four working people for 10, no? And this is never gonna happen. This will, will never work, no? I see. Three people cannot feed 10, this is impossible. So it sounds like moving here was a smart move. I was working all over the world because I'm a geologist, no? So right. I, I was familiar with Australia. I was familiar with Northern Africa. I, I had a place in the United States where I went to for over five years. With a, and I made a wish list, no? a more or less, not a to-do list, a wish list. You right. know, what is it that I don't want to have now? Yeah, that's important. And I don't want to have hurricanes. I don't want to have earthquakes. I don't want to have an instable political system. Right. No, I don't, I don't want to live in an area that is uh, uh, disconnected from all the uh, medical support or, or has very bad... Uh, water supply or right, electricity right. supply, you know, this was important for me and I wanted to have a place with a, which was a good hub to, to go to Europe, back to Europe to see my family and uh, one really important uh, point for me is the, the US dollar currency, you know. Yeah, they, they use the dollar here as their currency. Well, it, yeah. the official uh, currency is the Balboa, the Panamanian Balboa but it is one by one dollar, no? It is, it is 100% connected. Right, yes. right. I haven't seen a Balboa. Are they floating about? Because Yes, only they have only coins. A co I've seen the coins. Yes, yeah, seen the and coins. they have a one Balboa coin that is called Martinelli. Okay. You know, <laughs> this was the president when it was issued uh, the first time. And, okay. uh, well, give me one Martinelli. Uh, <laughs> this is the official, uh, official coin. One of the reasons you've said you, uh, that you moved here, um, particularly where we're sitting, is because this is in a luxury golf resort and you could have immediate access to the golf course. So, so what age did you start playing golf? I start... Um, 
when I was uh, 36 years old. It's kind of a late start. Yeah. <laughs> a little later than Tiger Woods. Huh? Oh, <laughs> only 34 years later. <laughs> We're in a golf resort here. Is yes. that right? Yes. Um, What's the name of the golf resort that, that we're in here in Coronado, Playa del? Well, it is called Coronado Golf and Luxury Resort. Okay. And uh, the <coughs> original designer or the designer from the golf course is Tom Fascio, a U.S. golf uh, architect, golf course architect. They modified a couple of holes. They lost this Tom Fascio quality seal. Mm -hmm. So it's not longer an official Tom Fascio golf course. It okay. is not longer using the brand Tom I Fascio, see. but the design is Tom Fascio and it's a very competitive long course. From the beginning, a golf hotel also. The membership in the golf community, you can also use a beach club. You can use a spa, you can use a gym. We have eight tennis courts. In this complex, I, I see there's homes of all different shapes and sizes, all the way from little cabins, all the way up to huge mansions. What would you say the lowest cost for one of these smaller white, uh, uh, would you call it a studio or a one bedroom cottage? All the way up to, I'm sure the mansions are really high, but what's the starting price? Yeah, the, the, the first houses that you can see when you enter the, the resort, these houses are now for sale without any land, no? Right. So as soon as you leave the front door, it's not your property. Right, right. But they have a community area, social area for the community, and uh, they selling these places in medium condition, for around $150,000. Okay. Small place. And then they probably have a monthly association, uh, a monthly due in order to pay for the grounds upkeep and whatnot, is that? How they have to pay a uh, guard at night okay. for the uh, landscaping, no? for the lowing right. and the, the mowing and all this stuff. And this is more or less around $380 a month. Okay. And that doesn't include joining the golf club membership, no. right? No, this is separate. If someone bought one of those houses or one of these beautiful houses like yours, how much does it cost to join the golf club? Ten years ago, I had to pay $10,000 family membership. But when the kids are 25 years and older, right. they have to get their own membership. And so someone could um, buy a golf membership whether or not they own a property inside here. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So people from the surrounding community could also buy. And is there, are there monthly dues? And what $300. Are they? So, so 10, 11,000 or whatever it is today, and then around 300 a month. Yeah. Um, and that's a one-time fee, the front money, right? The this is a, this is a one-time fee. If you want to use your own golf cart. Okay from your property, which is close to the, I see. To yeah. the fairway. Or a lot of these homes have them. Yes, they have this. And uh, then you have to pay $1,000 yearly fee. Okay. So whoever is sitting in this golf cart can play golf. No, no additional costs. Okay. And uh, when you rent as an as a affiliated member, mm -hmm. and you want to play nine holes, it's $13 okay. for the cart. Right. Or 25 for 18 holes. Now, so that is if you want to get a cart, but if you want to walk the... It's up to you. It's up to you. Then it's free. Yeah. That part of it is. So, yes. so, the, so the 10, 11, 12, whatever it is now to get in, plus the 300 a month covers the green fees. Yes. And the golf cart is char charged yes. more for the golf cart. Yeah. Um, unless you have your own, then you just pay 1000 per year? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and then everything else, the restaurants, the pool, um, the, the gym... It's all included. Except you buy the food when you go to the exactly. restaurant, right? Yeah, but you, you can use the, the social area of the, of the uh, beach club and uh, from the hotel. Yes, and they have a trolley that takes you over there, exactly. which is nice. A, and a, a mini bus. A mini bus that takes you yeah. back and forth every 10 minutes, 20 yeah, minutes or exactly. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a beautiful, uh, it's, uh, they have a restaurant at the club, they have lawn chairs, a pool and all that, and just like the, the main golf club, so... And then, um, any idea, like, what, it, what is, um, not the smaller white ones, but one of these other nicer homes, what's the price range of those if someone wanted to really get well, a nice price? <clears throat> with the COVID 
it went up and it went down. <laughs> Let's put it this way. The houses uh, you can use with a complete family, right? they are now more attracting the people. Because with the, with the COVID, the people went to the beaches on weekends. Yeah. The men that worked in the city went to the beaches and the family was living all the time in this beach house. Yes, yeah. So it became more attractive, the beach life, because the kids couldn't go to school. Yeah. It was all closed. We had a curfew everywhere. Yeah. And so and everyone wanted to live here since they couldn't exactly. go out in the city yeah. anyway yeah. They, or so, work in the city. So these homes with the three or four bedrooms, a maid's quarter, they increased in price. Okay, okay. And the smaller ones, they decreased. decreased. Oh, how funny. <laughs> and the small apartments also. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of Panamanians, locals, found out, oh, we should have a paradise by the beach of course, just yeah. in case we get another pandemic. So you built this house. I built this house, as I uh, mentioned earlier. My wife already had a property on the other side of Coronado. Right, right. And, and I... Traded. I traded and I had to pay a little bit more because the area, the location is, was more attractive. Right, right. And uh, it came with a golf membership, so I had to pay for the membership, but I was in the double-gated community. Right, right. And uh, it had a better... It had a better size. It was not, the other property was a little bit steep. No. Okay. So, so this is more usable. Was more usable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, Thank you. And it's fascinating how you built it. So who designed your floor plan? It's very interesting. Well, house. I had the original idea what I needed and the square meters because right. this is affecting the building costs. I gave a, a rough scheme to the architect. Uh -huh. He did the drawings, the special plans for the building code uh, related right. so installations. Could get, so you could get the permits and everything. To get the permit from the bomberos, from the, from the fire uh, brigade sure, sure, and sure. Uh, electricity and the plumbing right. and all this stuff. Yeah, this was his part. My goal for the house was the house should match Panamanian lifestyle. You know, because you cannot always expect to get a foreigner right. as, a, as a potential buyer. Right, right. So a, a Panamanian house has to have space for a maid. Minimum two kids, three kids is even better. Every single room has to have its own bathroom. It ha it, you need a swimming pool and you should have a jacuzzi, you know. This is a minimum requirement for a little bit upscale beach house. Right, know? right. And, and the other thing I, I think is fascinating is that the home doesn't have windows. It's a fully open floor plan. I, well, the, the, the sala, the, the living room, has no windows. Okay. All the other rooms, they have windows and they have also their own air conditioning. And another goal, really important goal for me, was uh, not to have any steps or stairs inside the house. No? Because getting older... This is always one of the main reasons you're falling down or you, you break your hips or you break your legs. All on one level. As you all said, you could roll anywhere in a wheelchair here. Yes, exactly. Yes. The not having windows, to answer your question, in the, in the living room is a, one part of my philosophy to save energy right. cost-wise. Yeah, yeah. And also not to bring your body all the time in the stress with having 16 or 18 degrees inside and 32 or 35 outside. Yeah, know? exactly. Cost-wise, the energy is uh, very expensive in Panama. We have um, uh, 26 US cent for a kilowatt hour. Compared to Germany, it has around 12, no? But you have these big fans in there that uh, on the ceilings that yes. keep it cool. Yeah, six meter high. Uh, living room. No. You mentioned that um, that you uh, married a Panamanian woman, so you came here single. So how did the two of you meet? Uh, in well, Panama? we had a common friend. We met and we fell in love, so it was <laughs> <laughs> the happy end. <laughs> so do you feel safe living here in Panama? Oh, I feel very safe uh, for many reasons. First of all, it is a small country, you know, so the police has a complete overview, especially regional and they know their uh, clients, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's better than having a big country like Brazil or Argentina you know, that is, or, or Chile, which is 
uh, huge. No? Right, right. So this is always a small neighborhood. And uh, second, the people, the Panamanians, they are very friendly, you know. As long as you leave these people alone, they're not aggressive, uh, they're not really behind your stuff. And this, this is also one of the reasons we have many actors here, you know. We are, we have people like uh, Bruce Willis having properties here by the beach in Pedasi. Uh, Mick Jagger has a property by the beaches. <laughs> uh, Justin Bieber is always here in vacation. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video for Google Map links, reports, and other information. There you will also see our Retire Cheap in Paradise catalog, how we pay for our travels, and my free ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 14 plus years.